today I will be talking about the way we at Blau use social media data as a source for social media analysis. And in a sense, social media data is not different from data you collect through a questionnaire or qualitative interview. Um, the amount of insight you extract from the data depends on the skills you have as a researcher. Uh, today I will show you the steps we take to get the most out of social media analysis uh, performed on the data you collected through a social media monitoring tool. Uh, but first I would like to talk on the reasons why social media are such, such an interesting source of information. Um, the past five or six years uh, have shown a shift in sources uh, consumers use uh, when they seek information. Uh, a shift from channels owned and managed by brands, uh, the company website for example, to consumer generated content such as consumer reviews sites and social networks. Uh, this also explains why metrics such as the Net Promoter Score have become so popular recently. Uh, the, the, the crisis and especially what happened to the financial sector uh, have done much damage to the amount of confidence consumers have in information sent out by brands uh, through their own channels. Let's see if I can advance to the next slide. Yes, I can. Um, so, what are social media to brands? Well, social media are the solution to restore trust. Uh, they bridge the gap between consumers and brands by establishing a direct line between them, uh, a connection that formerly did not exist. Um, there's an interesting book by Chris Brogan and Julian Smith, uh, which is called Trust Agents, uh, which describes how employees who are already active in social media are key in forming these new relations uh, between brands, companies on, the, on, the, on, the, on one side and consumers on the other side. Um, but why is it so important to restore the trust? Um, well, if you think of the relations uh, you have with your friends and family, uh, then along the line you'll probably have had an argument with every one of them. Uh, but since they're friends and family, you, uh, well, you're angry a bit and after a couple of days you make up and go on. Well, brands want to be your friend as well. Uh, and, and less distance between brands and consumers is, is useful because you create understanding for what you're doing as a brand and have sort of a, a number of credits uh, when, you, when you mess up. Um, Let me find the button to go to the next slide, which is not visible at the moment. Oh, there it is. So companies come up with the following plan. Uh, let's uh, start listening to social media, what consumers are telling about us. Then uh, probably we'll learn a great deal on what our customers want and are saying uh, and can build upon that. Eventually, of course, to profit from it. Uh, this sounds sensible. Uh, but then we get to the fact that social media are, are huge and, and expanding rapidly. Uh, so these are, these are uh, some, some stats on how big social media actually uh, is at the moment. Um, and probably you're familiar with these stats, but well, they're, they're sort of fun to see. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go through them quite quickly. Uh, if Facebook were a country, it would be the third, third most populated in the world, ahead of the US and only China and India are more populated. And if we look at the number of pieces of content that are, are, are posted on Facebook, it's 25 billion a month and that's more than six times the volume, volume of last year. Uh, and if you look at another channel, uh, YouTube, every minute 48 hours of content is uploaded to YouTube. And of course, if you look at Twitter, there are over 100 million users at the moment. And they post over 200 million tweets per day, which of course is, is incredible. Uh, So there are a lot of messages to analyze. Well, that's one step too far. 
a lot of messages to analyze. And um, nowadays, uh, someone working in an office is already uh, um, uh, dealing with messages, email, uh, post-its, uh, text messages, 28% uh, of his or her time. If you uh, uh, add the number of messages that are in social media about your brand, then you're probably uh, doing nothing else than just analyzing messages from social media. So this image arises. Um, it can be overwhelming the amount of information that you can uh, get from the from social media, um, and it's not that easy to actually listen to what consumers are saying about you. There's a lot of noise and a lot of irrelevant messages, and a lot of advertisements and a lot of spam. Um, And we just haven't got round to uh, dealing with ways to analyze the, the huge amount of information in social media. Um, well, we at Blau agree with Clay Shirky on this and say it's not information overload, it's, uh, it's filter failure. Um, and a year or two ago, we started thinking about how can we uh, go about with the huge amount of messages in social media and, and distill information, get, gain insights from that huge mass of, of messages. Um, well, and the, the solution we found was close to home. This is uh, my boss, this is Rijn Vogelaar, and he uh, is the author of uh, the book The Super Promoter. And I'll explain what a super promoter is. It's quite easy. The super promoter is someone who is really enthusiastic about your product or brand, and someone who shares that enthusiasm with his friends or colleagues, and um, is influential. Uh, his opinion matters to his social environment. Um, and we applied the same logic to online buzz. When we look at social media messages, we focus on messages with a distinctive enthusiastic sentiment or a clearly negative sentiment. Uh, spoken or posted by people who do not post a single message about your brand, but do so uh, often over time. Uh, and we focus on messages that do not reach only one or two followers or are posted by people who have two or three friends on Facebook. Uh, but we look at messages that reach uh, uh, a bigger audience. And if we apply those two rules to, to social media messages, we have a way to uh, say, okay, this mes message is more important than another message. Um, this distinction between enthusiastic messages and, and negative messages, so a sentiment analysis, uh, we do this by hand. Uh, and of course, everybody knows the examples of, of irony or sarcasm where, where automated sentiment analysis doesn't work. But it's also a matter of perspective. We do a lot of uh, event evaluations um, for, for big events, uh, such as Roca and Rio, which is, which is a huge event in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, where more than five million people visit a live event, a festival over two weekends. Um, and we, when we evaluate such an event for the organizer of, of the event and, and look at a message that says, damn, the tickets are sold out for my concert, uh, an automated sentiment analysis would clearly say that's a negative message. Uh, but since we're doing it for the organizer of the festival, it's, it's a beautiful message. Someone is, 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 is sorry that uh, the concert is sold out. Well, it's sort of a, a missed potential uh, for the organizer. Uh, so it, 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 it depends on which perspective you have in looking at these messages, whether or not some, something is positive or something is negative. And that's why uh, we still do it by hand. And uh, when automated sentiment analysis uh, becomes better, then we'll probably switch. But for now, we do it by hand. And we present those messages uh, in uh, an online dashboard that's quite simple not as uh, sophisticated or complicated as uh, the, the bigger social media monitoring software companies. It's, it's quite simple. But it's, it helps us in, in gaining insights from these messages. And it starts with an overview just of your positive messages 
versus your negative messages. And you can sort by time and uh, and we, we augment the messages with, with, uh, with information. Uh, I've deliberately kept the messages in Dutch so you won't start reading all the messages. It's, it's just to show what we do with those messages. We augment the messages first of all with uh, our sentiment analysis. So there's a column here which, which has twos in it. And it says, well, these are very positive messages. And you can sort by, uh, by reach the number of Twitter followers someone has. And you can also look at the number of times someone has previously said something positive about your brand or product. Um, and what we also do, we label the products, uh, the label the messages. So we say, what is it about? Of course, all the messages are about a, a certain brand. But are they on the campaigns that the brand is doing at the moment? Or uh, are they about the products that the, uh, the brand sells? Or uh, something about the image uh, of the brand? Um, and it's really easy to filter all the messages according to the topic they're about. And what we also do is focus on influencers or, or enthusiastic influencers, which are, of course, what we call super promoters. So it's really easy to see, okay, what has this person said along uh, over the past year uh, on my brand, and, and why are they so enthusiastic about me? Uh, which argument, arguments do they use to transfer that enthusiasm onto others? Uh, and this is very insightful to understand why, uh, what motivates someone to post all those positive messages about you in social media. Um, and this learns you a great deal more than just looking at statistics or single messages. You have to put things into perspective and, and take the context of messages. Uh, and see what motivates a single person to write about you uh, that often over time. Um, we also look at conversations, again, to look at context. Why is someone saying something? Well, he's not saying something to you, he's saying someone, something to his friend. And if you take the entire conversation and look at what people are saying to each other, then you learn a, a great deal on, on what motivates people to say something and uh, how they um, uh, persuade others uh, to, to have the same opinion or to buy a certain product. We have a great deal of experience now in this. We, we sort of have five different topics. We look at what your influential uh, clients are saying. We uh, analyze a lot of uh, events through social media. We look at campaigns uh, of brands. We also look at what people are saying about a certain uh, content domain or theme, like uh, artificial sweeteners or, or biologic food. Um, and of course, uh, the logical uh, example, we look at what people are saying about your brand. And these are uh, mainly Dutch brands uh, active in the, in the financial uh, uh, district. Um, and we're quite successful in doing the, the social media analysis uh, this way. Um, what I want to uh, uh, tell you is these are two worlds. On the left side we have uh, quantitative uh, analysts and on the right side we have qualitative analysts, quanti qualitative researchers. And uh, when uh, analyzing social media data, uh, quantitative analysts have the tendency to start counting and qualitative analysts have the tendency to, to start mind mapping or uh, uh, drawing uh, maps of how things work. Well, in treating social media data, because of the size, it, it's qualitative information on a quantitative scale. And uh, that means that in, in analyzing this data, we have to uh, find a, a combination of the two uh, methods in analyzing data. That neither uh, suffices. You have to find uh, a form that's uh, that's in between. Um, I think I'm sort of running out of time today, only at 10 minutes, so uh, I'll uh, show you this slide of, of one of our reports. Um, and again, 
uh, sometimes it, it works just to quantify stuff, so sentiment. It also works to show word clouds because you get a quick feeling of what's inside the message, messages on a certain topic. And it's also very useful just to use quotes uh, because an individual quote, only one, uh, can have more impact than uh, a statistic saying how many, how many number, how many messages you found that, uh, that, that state just that. Uh, so, in reporting, we also do uh, a mix-up of, of a qualitative report and a quantitative report, which, which suits social media data quite well. Um, I think for my, going to skip this since I'm running out of time. Um, please feel free to contact me uh, if you have uh, further questions regarding uh, this and uh, I hope you uh, liked uh, how we at Blau go about dealing with this uh, social media data research.